Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Malika, I'm an expat and content creator and I'm currently living in Lebanon, but right now we are on vacation here in beautiful Santorini. Check out this view behind me, it's absolutely amazing. We've been here for a few days and so one of the things I want to talk to you about today is this trip. Most importantly, the cost of traveling to Santorini and how you can save big on your vacation here. It's one of the most beautiful destinations in Greece, in Europe, and really the world, and it's definitely worth a visit, but it can be outlandishly expensive. So I wanted to give you some tips I've learned along the way about how you can save big on your trip to Santorini. So number one, the most important thing to keep in mind is the timing of your trip. Right now we're here in the second week of April, which is kind of the beginning of the shoulder season, so it's still off peak. Things are a little bit sleepy, things are a little bit quiet, but the savings value is significant. So travel to Santorini really peaks in like July, August, and then even like June starts to get a little bit more expensive. So if you come in the shoulder season like April or September, October, you'll still have beautiful weather, gorgeous views, you'll get to really enjoy the island because it won't be as overwhelming and as crowded, and you will save a ton. Everything in Santorini gets more expensive in summer. Hotels, going out, excursions, really everything just like the prices start to creep up and really do skyrocket so coming in the off season like I said April or September is one of the best ways to save money on your stay. And so obviously if you're coming in the off season it will be a little bit cold and so obviously if you're a beach bum and you want to come in the summer just hanging on the beach and spend your time laying around you might not have as much fun coming in April because it is a little chilly, it is a little windy, it's definitely not beach weather but it's more just like walking around the town exploring weather and you can still have a great time and really enjoy the beauty of the island but if you do have your heart set on the beaches then you're gonna have to come in the summer to spend the money to come at that time Another way to save big on your trip to Santorini is your hotel. So we're staying in On The Rocks Hotel. It's one of the small Latrigas hotels in the world. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's like carved out on the side of the cliffs. There's stunning views, an amazing restaurant. We even got upgraded to this like, gorgeous suite with a hot tub for free because at such low occupancy right now. So this hotel for our stay was running around $175 a night in April. In June, it climbed to around four hundred dollars a night. In July, it's over like $700 a night. So, April and off season, it's a great place to stay in luxury hotels, have a really great world class experience, but save a ton of money. So, if you are trying to plan your trip and you want to stay somewhere nice and kind of bougie, definitely go in the shoulder season. But if you don't really care about where you're staying, just want to be here in the summer where it's peak time and it's popping, then you're going to need to save a little bit more in your hotel and go a little bit less expensive. All right, and we made it down here to beautiful Oya Santorini, just in time for sunset. It's about like 5.15 right now, getting to that golden hour. I think sunset is at 7.30, and now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about planning your itinerary and how you can kind of coordinate the best things to do down here, of course, on the cheap. So we left our hotel this morning. We took a taxi to a winery, Santa Wines, spent the day at the winery doing a little tour and tasting. It's absolutely beautiful, definitely worth it if you come to Santorini. So when I was doing research, I saw a lot of really expensive Santorini wine tours. They were all around like 150 to 200 ahead, and they really just think Include it like a pickup at your hotel and drives to two different wineries at most and then a tasting and you're on your own for food, you're on your own for a lot of expenses and it was like really really pricey to me to spend like $350 to $400 a day just to like go taste some wine, right? So I found such a wine to have an a la carte option where you book a tasting, it was around 40 euros a person um, and includes like a little nice cheese platter with the tasting, you get a full tour. So that's a really great way to kind of have the wine experience, gorgeous views, like drop dead stunning um, and we spent $85 for that. With the transportation it ended up being like a little over. 100. So to me, totally worth it for two people for a really beautiful afternoon in the sun, drinking wine, just kind of living the dream, right? Um, and then at the end of the day, after the tour, we decided to go head into Oya to spend some time exploring, get here early, get a good spot for sunset, and then make our way back to the hotel. So there are a lot of full day tours of Oya that will be like 50, 60 euros a person, and they'll drive you down here in a big bus, drive you through the streets, maybe you'll get like an hour of free time to explore, and then you're kind of on your own for grabbing sunset pictures. It was just like not the vibe, like it's very much 
it's going to be a crowded, rushed, like super touristy experience and then also super expensive. So we hired the same taxi driver. Again, it was expensive to get here, but compared to what a tour would have cost, like I think worked in our favor. Um, took a taxi here, it's about 50 euros. We spent the afternoon kind of just exploring at our leisure, you know, had wine, had a nice long lunch, checked out some of the stores here, and then decided to kind of browse around and find the best place to watch the sunset. And so here we are now at Oya Castle. We got here nice and early because again, like doing it yourself, you don't really have an itinerary to follow. You're kind of just like doing whatever you want whenever you feel like it. So we came up to the sunset spot right, bright and early, and we are here posted up in the perfect spot about an hour and a half before sun. So we've got a bottle of wine, which yes, if you guys want to save money, you do not need to go do anything fancy here. You can go grab a bottle of wine from the mini mart that's literally a block away from Oya Castle. Get your wine, get some cheese, get some snacks, make a nice little comfortable setup, and then hang out. Everything there is around 15 to 30 euros for wine. If you want cheaper, get it before you come into town. And really quickly on the transportation note, so yes, we are going to spend probably about 120 euros in taxis today. Yes, that is more expensive than it would have been to just rent a car, but it is not more expensive than it would have been doing tour groups. So if you're between tour groups, renting your own car, or just kind of taking taxis around, you can decide based on the different like factors and considerations that go into that. So tour groups will be much more expensive and have a fixed schedule you want to have your freedom. Taxis will be a lot more expensive than renting your own car, and you won't necessarily have the freedom to the, in the sense that you can just pick up and leave when you want to. You will have to kind of call your driver 20 minutes ahead of time and kind of schedule your pickup, and they are pretty expensive. So we're spending about 120 on the day, going between our hotel to the winery, the winery here to Oya for sunset, and then we're going to head back to the hotel. Um, the reason why we decided to do taxis is because my husband and I are both not people who drink and drive like at all, not even a sip. Um, he's just very, very strict about that, and I can barely drive when I'm stone cold sober. So we. We're just not people who do it so we won't even have like one drink if we're gonna drive which I know most adults do most people will have like one or two if they're gonna get behind the wheel and be fine it's just not something that we do which is why when we're traveling we just automatically know we're gonna be relying on taxis and we budget for it accordingly so decide what kind of traveler you are how you feel like how do you feel about driving in a foreign country if you have been drinking or if you want to be the designated driver and just like not drink at all which you know I was not willing to do so whatever um, but that's just gonna be a consideration because you might just have to spend a little bit more money to have a little bit more fun and freedom and be more comfortable. But enough of me rambling on, I'm gonna go crack this bottle of wine, we're gonna get ready to go watch the sunset, it promises to be absolutely beautiful, and then I will wrap up tomorrow morning or maybe later tonight with more tips about Santorini. Catch you guys in a bit. And last thing we're gonna talk about is the food, so saving money and going out and dining in Santorini. So, of course, as you'd expect, there are amazing restaurants here, tons of good food, and a lot of them are really beautiful, like they'll have gorgeous scenic views, like beautiful views of the sea, the mountains, and they're just like absolutely beautiful dining experiences, but if you're trying to save money on the ship, you're not eating at any of them, or maybe you're gonna eat at one or two of them, but it's not gonna be what you do on a regular basis. So, what you are gonna do if you follow my first tip by staying in a nice hotel by coming in the off season, is you're staying in a nice hotel and you're saving on that portion, you're gonna basically be getting takeout guys and you're going back to your hotel and eating and enjoying these amazing views that you're paying for here. Cause you're gonna get the same view that you would in the fancy restaurant, but right here at your hotel. So we did that a couple of times. So we would do like kind of the cheaper dinners out or like a lunch out and then all the way back to the hotel, pick up takeout. There's like amazing like street souvlaki, street vendors, like all kind of food you can order in or pick up. And then just kind of eat on the balcony or out here by the pool where the views are gorgeous. You're still getting the dining experience and the food is amazing, but it's like a third of the price that you would spend eating at a restaurant so you're saving money and still having a really nice great experience bonus points if you go ahead and buy your own cocktail mixers or your own bottle of wine out because again saving money on that liquor liquor tab too and that is it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it if you liked it please subscribe like this video share it leave a comment below let me know I'm on my way to Athens this morning so we'll be doing spending some time in that city exploring a little bit and then we're heading over to Cairo and I'm really excited because I've never been to Egypt and then after that, I'll be going back home to Lebanon where I live so if you want to learn more about those various journeys and also just like expat life in Lebanon. I've been living there for about a year and it's actually amazing. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at Words Malika and subscribe to this channel to be first to know about everything I'm getting up to and all my travels and what you can learn about these different places. Stay tuned for more and thanks for watching.